It's my garden inspired slow stitching pouch. It's just made from a simple rectangle and stitched together. Because there's batting in between the fabric and it's all stitched together, it's nice and stiff so it can stand up on its own. Follow along from start to finish as I create this pouch. I'm starting with a piece of felt as my batting that is 12 and 3 quarters by 7 inches or 32 by 18 centimeters. These are the fabrics that I've pulled. I've started with this floral with a navy background and I've grabbed some other fabrics that I think go with it. So I'm going to start by cutting a piece from this floral fabric and I'm going to place that on my batting. And then I'm going to bring in the navy color and place that in the other direction beside the floral fabric. Then I'm gonna add this bright green color at the other end. So that's the base I'm gonna work from. And then I'm gonna bring in this fabric that has trees and leaves and twigs on it and cut it down to size and try and find a place for that to go. I think the colors go really well and the background is light instead of dark so that's a bit of a contrast. So I just need to find where I want it to go. I'm keeping in mind that I don't want my collage to go on those edges. I wanna keep my collage inside a couple of centimeters or about an inch inside of all the edges. So I found a place for that first piece of fabric and I'm just gonna to continue to build the collage from there. Auditioning pieces and bringing them in, finding a place for them. And really, it's an intuitive process of just placing fabrics, moving them around, excluding some, cutting some down to size, and moving them around until I feel like they've found a nice home. So now I've got my first layer of collage. It's time for me to think about this floral piece that was my initial inspiration. And I wanna bring it into the other half, other three quarters, I should say, of the collage. So I start to audition pieces and sizes and placement. I want some to be over top of the other pieces and some to be underneath. So I just keep moving little pieces around to try and find a really pleasing layout. And as I do that, I also start to get ideas about the other pieces and maybe adjusting them a little bit. And at this point, really, it's just tweaking all the things that I have down. I've selected the fabrics. I don't wanna bring another fabric in at this point. So it's really just making adjustments on the pieces that I've chosen and trying to have them in more than one place in the collage so that there's the color and the texture is, is seen all over because I know that in the end, this piece isn't going to be laying flat, that I'm going to fold it. And so I just move the last little pieces around until I have the collage exactly the way that I want it. And then I'm going to be ready to pin it down and stitch it. I grab my pin cushion and my pins and I start bringing them out and what I wanna do is just pin everything down enough so that I can stitch it. I don't normally use pins. I like to just uh, baste things on without anything else, but this piece is larger and it's really not gonna to hold together unless I pin it. So I'm just placing them around so that I can bring out my thread and baste everything. So I've chosen this accru color because it's very similar to the colors in this lighter piece of fabric. And then I've pulled out one other color, which is a navy blue, and it's close to the navy colors that are in the piece. And I think it matches well. So at this point, just two colors, and I'm going to begin basting. So I'm going to be moving across the piece on the short side just doing running stitches. And I'm gonna space them apart as much as I possibly can, because my goal here is just to tack down all the pieces of fabric and to remove the pins. I wanna have the pins in my piece 
for the least amount of time as possible. So I'm making a pass across the piece and doing the straight stitches up and down in the accrue just to secure everything. And as I travel across the surface of the piece, I'm aware that these stitches are my first layer of color and texture. So the stitches themselves, I'm not too concerned about making straight, straight lines across the piece, but the size of the stitches themselves, I'm making them relatively similar because I know as I come back, they're going to be elements that inform the next level of stitching that I'm doing. So I'm almost at the end of my first pass across the piece, which means that everything's secured. I have no more pins left in my piece and I can turn and make another pass in the other direction to continue to secure the piece and also to make parallel lines in between the lines that I already created. So having done that second pass in the accrue color, I've switched to the navy and I've started to do some slow stitching lines in the other direction. I'm starting in the panel that has that bright green color and I'm moving up in and out, making stitches across that piece. But mostly at this point, I'm making marks and I'm adding color and I'm adding texture. And what this navy color is doing is unifying the green piece with the navy piece because the colors are so different. And this is really bringing those two pieces together into one. So I've added some lines in this darker color and I just came in here and started adding some lines here. I, I think of these sometimes as mending lines where two fabrics meet and I'm mending them together. But really they're just straight stitches and they're closer together than these ones. So I'm going to continue uh, working around the piece and this is a good time to bring in another color. I've just got the dark and the light at this point so I've pulled out this green that I think matches really well with the green that I have. So I'm going to think about places I might want to add that. And of course, any color that's in this piece, I could bring in some of this purple. I could bring in some of these lighter blue colors. I could bring in some of this pink color. So the options are really wide. And really at this point, my goal is to stitch enough in the places where fabric isn't secured, that there aren't any edges that are going to be moving around. And I could do circles. I could do more of these mending stitches. I could do blanket stitch. Really, the options are totally open at this point to just embellish as much as I want. Um, and get it ready for the next stage, which is putting a lining fabric inside this piece that will be secured with some more straight stitches. And so I'm going to keep that in mind when I'm embellishing that I'm either going to be stitching my lining fabric on with straight stitches going across in this direction or this direction, either one's fine. And that's a step that's still to come. But for now, I'm just going to continue stitching, embellishing, making marks. I've got my green thread and I'm going around this lighter colored piece of fabric. This is actually my second round on this edge. I went around with some of the navy thread. Now I've come back with the green and I'm just trying to add marks while at the same time securing all the edges down. So I'm going to continue like this around each little patch of fabric, just surrounding it with these straight stitches. It's not a blanket stitch, it's just a straight stitch and it's adding lots of interest but also it has a very functional purpose of just holding everything down in place so that when the piece is touched and it moves around that these pieces are going to stay secured and even though the edges are raw 
there's still going to be a bit of fraying, but they're going to be secured down for the most part and they're not going to be flapping around or get caught on something. So I've gone around and stitched each piece of fabric so there's nothing that's going to come up. There's still, you know, some loose threads and some edges. So it's got a nice rustic feel to it, but the stitching I've done has secured everything down quite well. And so at this point, I could call it done and um, just move on to adding my backing, my lining fabric. But I just want to add a little bit more stitching. This is These are just extra embellishments. I started doing some stitches here in green. I'm going to do a few more around the piece and then I'll be ready to add my lining fabric. You can look at some of the stitching that I've done. I've done some stitching over here, a little more intense in one area and less intense in others along this floral piece. I've added some matching stitching on this blue piece and some matching stitching on this lighter piece as well. I chose two different colors, my ecru and my navy color for this purple piece. Some straight stitching here. And over here on this green, I chose to use the ecru as well as this larger piece. So it's just a variety of um, different patterns, but really there's just straight stitches, just different combinations of straight stitches. I think it's unified the piece and it's added so much texture that's really gonna add a lot to the finished piece. I've just lightly touched it with the iron just to flatten out any larger areas where it was wrinkled. It's still not completely flat, but it's much flatter than it was. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my piece of lining fabric. So my piece measures about 12 and a half by seven. And the piece that I've chosen to use for lining is about 14 by eight. It's just a little bigger all around. So I have some play to fold over here. So now the next step is to baste this piece on. What I'm gonna do is old fashioned basting with thread. That's just my basting method of choice. Any basting method will do, including pins. I'm just using regular thread. This is polyester thread meant for the sewing machine. And I'm using a smaller needle. And I have tied a knot in the end, and so I'm just pulling the long piece through. And then I'm taking small stitches through the front, and I'm hopping over so the stitches in the back are a bit bigger. And I'm starting in the middle here, and I'm just moving across the piece. And because I'm working on a cutting mat, that I'm not worried about rooting my table. I can kind of poke in a bit with my needle and I can feel that I've got all the layers. But you can also pick it up like this and pull it through. So I'm just moving across the middle with my stitches and coming out and then I'm just going to move over towards one of the sides, continuing to take the stitches smaller on the front and bigger on the back and getting everything secured in place so it doesn't shift around too much for the next stage I know it's going to be secure. So now everything's basted in place. If we look at the back you can see the large stitches and the, where I jumped around and secured everything down. So now the piece is ready for the stitching that's going to go through all layers and it's going to show on the back. So I can either go in this direction up and down or the other direction across. So I'm burying my knot in between the batting and the backing and I'm just beginning to take some stitches across the piece. And one of the things that's definitely an option when making this is having this backing piece, the lining piece on from the very beginning. So what that would mean is 
at the beginning when you've got your batting. You could put the backing behind it and then make your collage and proceed in exactly the same way. So the only difference would be that all of the stitching that you do and all of the knots and everything would be shown in your lining fabric. And that's perfectly acceptable and nice and an option. Well, the reason that I don't do it is there's a couple of reasons. One of them is that I actually like the feel of having the batting in my hands when I stitch. And so I like to do it that way. And the other reason is I don't like all of my stitches and knots at the back to show, um, especially in a case like this, I don't want them to be something that can be snagged on or pulled on the inside. And so for that reason, I've done all my stitching uh, without the backing and now I'm putting it on and there's just going to be this one pass across the piece of stitching. In terms of how far apart to make each line, I would say, you know, maybe um, anywhere between a couple of centimeters, like maybe, you know, an inch or half an inch, somewhere in there. I think probably what I'll end up doing is, is in between half an inch and an inch for how, how far apart my lines are going to be. And I'm just going to take the stitches to be about the same size that I've done before, unless I'm stitching in a spot where I really don't want them to show, in which case I'm going to take a bigger stitch on the back and a smaller stitch on the front. So I'm starting a new row, burying my thread again, and I'm just going to move across with the same stitching that I've done before. If I had used fusible and had fused my backing, to this stitched piece. This step would not be necessary, but I could still do it. So I may have a reason why I don't want to have any stitching on the inside. And in that case, the fusible would be perfect. But having said that, I could have also fused it in place and then just added stitching for decorative purposes and that would have been nice as well. So there's lots of options in um, what you can do here, which is really nice. And I, I really like that, you know, there's options depending on what you want to do. So now it's time to stitch these ends. So what I've done here is I have folded in twice and secured it with some clips. And it's just a matter of stitching it all down. Any stitch would work. I happen to have decided to use a blanket stitch. And I'm just going to work my way across and stitch both ends so that they're secured. As I finish up and I come to the edge of where I've been doing the blanket stitching, I want to just secure that part down as well. I fold it in the raw edge there and I don't want it to come undone. So I'm just taking some straight stitches all the way through the fabric. So they're going to show on the other side, which is fine. Then I'm going to take my needle and I don't want to knot there. So I'm going to make my needle travel over a bit. And then I'm going to take a stitch and come out in my batting. And I'm going to tie off my knot there just so that again, the knots hidden, it makes things more secure. And as well, there's, there's not a knot that can be pulled by any use. So now that that's buried, take a look at both ends and see that they're stitched and there's no raw edges on those two ends. So I fold the right sides together and I'm using some clips to hold them. And then I'm just going to begin stitching the sides together. I start at the bottom and I'm working my way up and I'm using a back stitch. You can see I've used a water soluble marker to mark the lines on both sides where I'm going to stitch. And I'm coming to the top of my side and so I'm just going to take some extra stitches in there so that it's really strong at the top where there may be some stress on the piece. I just go back and forth a few extra times 
to make sure that it's really secure and it's going to hold. I still have thread left on my needle, so I'm just going to drop it and I'm going to turn the bag right side out just to double check the seams and make sure that I caught everything and that everything looks good. And it does. And so now I'm going to think about the seams I've just made on the inside that have raw edges. And I want to hide those raw edges and enclose everything so everything is secure. So I'm picking a side that I want the seam to face and I'm gonna fold in the raw edges in on themselves. And I'm gonna take the thread that's left on my needle and start stitching down that raw edge. So my bag at this point is right side out and I'm at the top. So I'm just going to secure at the very top the seams. And some of that's gonna show those first few stitches and that's fine. Just wanna make sure it's going through every layer and that it's very secure at the top there because there's quite a few layers of fabric. Then I'm gonna start moving inside the bag and stitching that folded seam down. And I'm gonna continue that all the way down the seam to the very end. So I'm gonna invert the bag after I take these first few stitches and I'm gonna continue that stitching to enclose that entire seam. The other thing you might notice is that the seam below, there's actually two rows of stitching. And so what I decided when I was stitching up the bag is that I wanted it to be extra strong and I wanted to be sure to capture all the edges and that there wasn't anything raw. And so I actually did two rows of stitching just to make sure that everything was captured and just to give it extra strength. Now that edge is completely encased and there's no raw edges. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I can pick either side to do this same stitching. And so I've picked my side and I'm rolling those raw seams in and I'm gonna begin stitching, burying my knot there and coming up so that it's not showing and I'm going to take the extra stitches at the top just to make sure that I get through all those layers. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to move down all the way to the bottom and encase that seam as well. So I'm taking more stitches at the top just to make it secure. And then as I move down, I'm spacing them out a little bit more. There, everything's encased. The only thing left are these blue marks from the water soluble marker. So I've just got a little bit of water on a cloth and I'm just dabbing right along the seams where all the blue marks were. And I'm not super concerned about getting every little speck off, but I want to get it off enough so it's not distracting for me. So I give that a moment to dry off and then it's time to turn my bag right side out push out the corners and have a look at my enclosed seams and appreciate what I've created. I could put a button here and make a closure if I wanted. I could even stitch in a zipper, but I just wanna leave it like this because there's batting in between the fabric and it's all stitched together. It's nice and stiff, so it can stand up on its own. I even like how I can fold it like it's origami. I really like looking at the different angles when it's folded. I'm gonna use it to store my stitching supplies. Because it sits open like this, all my supplies will be ready for me to grab when I need them. And the way I'm gonna use it, it doesn't need a closure. And it's just a beautiful thing to look at. It doesn't need to be practical, but it is. I hope you enjoyed watching this process and maybe I've inspired you to make your own. Remember, it's only a rectangle folded in half, but the important part is all the slow stitching. So enjoyable. Thank you so much for joining me. 
See you again. Bye.